Welcome to the Geeks Assembled podcast. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Hello, and uh, welcome to Geeks Assembled. And today we are talking about a TV, a British TV comedy series which lasted five seasons in the 1990s. Uh, this particular episode we're talking about today came from the second season in 1994. Uh, it stars Robert Powell and uh, Jasper Caro in The Detectives, and the episode we are talking about today is called Collard. So, so not further to do, we'll just open the floor and ask what was your first impressions of this episode as you've watched it, because I think for some people in this cast, it'll be the first time they've seen this show. So what was your first impressions? Well, um, Jason. What was your first impression of this? I thought it was pretty funny. I mean, I actually quite enjoyed this. I was not. I was trying to figure out, okay, what's going on here with the whole blind dude situation there. That was just pretty funny, um, especially way in the beginning. I mean, with the whole um, thought there was going to be some kind of bomb suitcase or something. I was trying to figure out what the heck is going on <laughs> with them being um, suspended and. And it, I was familiar, it definitely was familiar with the actor, one of them who appeared in one of the Doctor Who stories. Um, I thought it was pretty funny. I thought it was hilarious. I definitely laughed all the way through. Um, ex- I mean, with the whole dog just staring at them, and then they're just getting all confused, and the whole um, gang shows up with the um, undercover agents, and it turns out the blind man was one of them. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Thanks for that, Jason. Uh, Susan, what was your uh, take on this episode? First time I'd seen dete- the detectives, and I thought it was cute. I thought it was funny. I thought it was, uh, yeah, I, you know, the people in in the United Kingdom have the greatest sense of humor ever, and so that was great. What I won't, I won't disagree with you there, Susan. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and and so I, I enjoyed it, and it was uh, it was a new new thing for me. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much my first impression. Oh, thanks for that. Then um, I will move straight on to uh, Beef Dad. Let's see what he thought of this. Well, I'll be perfectly honest. Um... I watched the first ever episode and to be perfectly honest I wasn't wildly impressed um, I am a big big fan of Jasper Carrot's stand-up comedy and t- to see him having to stick to a script that rather spoilt it all for me um, Robert Powell, yeah, it's nice to see Robert Powell doing a bit of comedy, made a change. Um, George Sewell, who always plays superintendents, and yeah, no, no big change of character there for him. But what was an absolute piece of magic was Gwen Taylor playing Annie, and that was just so funny. She saved that episode for me. Yeah, it's, uh, that that characterisation of the um, Irish landlady was over the top, um, brilliantly played. Um, she's a brilliant, brilliant actress. Um, we don't see her in enough things, to be honest. Um, uh, she, she needs to be on TV more. Um, is I don't think Alex is back yet, is he? No. Well, I'll I'll go instead of him. Um, yeah, I mean, I remember this uh, episode when it first aired way back in 94. Um, Admittedly, there is better episodes out there, but this was just chosen at random. Um, But it's a typical 25-minute episode of the detectives, the two bungling detectives with their chief superintendent who always, 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 you know, he he, he hates them, really. He's like um, like the Herbert Lom character in the Pink Panther movies, really. Um, But... As you say, Robert Powell 
it is good to see him playing comedy because he is uh, known as a, a thespian of the stage and screen. Uh, it's good to see him there. And I agree with Beef Dad, um, Jasper Carrot is better when he's on, on stage doing his stand-up. Um, but he does do a good job in this. I mean, it, it lasted five seasons, so they must have been doing something, right? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a romp, uh, as you say. So, for me, I enjoyed it, but uh, let's find out. So, I think we already know Beef Dad's favourite character in this episode, but we'll go back to him and we'll make, go a bit more further into this character. What favourite uh, characters and favourite um, part parts of the episode, Beef Dad? Definitely. You're muted. But no, no. no, I'm not. Definitely. Well, was. <laughs> Definitely, Annie, the um, the Irish pub landlady, she is just so funny in this. With the incredible bee stung Bride of Frankenstein lipstick. Uh, it, it just it, it, absolutely extraordinary. Totally, totally over the top, but in a way that only Gwen Taylor could possibly get away with. Um, and yeah, it was just absolute, absolute piece of magic. Um, as I say, the thing about Jasper Carrot is having to stick to a script isn't Jasper Carrot. Jasper Carrot used to, when he was doing his stage stand up, I uh, he would go into one thing and then he'd sort of he'd just follow where his mind took him and. And you're just not used to seeing that with Jasper Carrot, him sticking to a script. But yeah, it was very pos popular with a lot of people. Um, but I'm probably not one of them. Uh, let's uh, let's move on to Jason. Uh, favorite characters, favorite moments in the episode. Well, like I said before, um, my favorite character is definitely that blind man, the guy who was just pretending he's blind, just fooling those two guys um, with the whole um, dog situation, with the whole um, playing pool game. <laughs> that that really got me. That definitely really got me. I was just laughing. It's like just to see their reaction, their face getting all confused about what's going on here. <laughs> I seriously could not stop laughing. I mean, it, it was definitely enjoyable. Um, then when he finally actually revealed himself that he wasn't blind. <laughs> Which I, I figured it wasn't. I mean, I figured he was. I figured he was just toying with them. And, but I was, I, I was a bit confused, wondering if he was going to be part of the um, the bad guys or what was going on here. But it turns out he was one of the secret agents. And, well, yeah, <laughs> she's standing out for me on this one. Uh, to be honest, to be honest, I, I really wanted him to be blind, really blind, was the dog. I wanted that to be, uh, I really wanted that to happen. I, I wanted the dog to be telling him what pool balls he was hitting, and I, but it wasn't to be. Um, over to Susan, favourite characters, favourite moments? Favourite character was, uh, I guess the two detectives were, were awesome, and I love that, that they were... Uh, that they were endangering everyone at the beginning and then and then redeeming themselves trying to at the end but there was more help on the way so that was that's where uh yeah that lied laid for me um i have a uh, yeah i it was it was great the dog was also really funny i thought that it's really hard to work with animals and kids and they worked with this dog, and it was great fun. Cool. Uh, for, for me, uh, I, th I think the way Robert Powell and Jasper Carrot work together as a team, it, it, it does come across on screen. They do work well together. Um, but um, the dog the dog was really well trained. I thought that was brilliant, mm -hmm. uh, you know. But it's... Um, for me, the, it, the the favorite scene for one of the favorite scenes for me is right at the beginning with the the bomb scene in the in the bank with the suitcase. Mm. And it turns out it's just his sandwiches. Uh, mm. <laughs> but yeah, for, uh, but Judge Sewell, as uh, Beef Dad said, but he is a brilliant was a was a brilliant actor. He's no longer with us. Um, and as Jason said, he did appear in um, Remembrance of the Daleks. I think it was uh, mm. a long, long time ago. But uh, 
Yeah, all, all, all well, it was a good ensemble cast for me. Uh, the plot, it, it, it was only 25 minutes, but it soon rushed through. So, yeah, that was oh. my favourites. But we'll mm. see this. Alex is here. We'll yeah. uh, ask him. Ask him what his take on this episode was. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I maybe I'm wrong, but I sort of viewed I sort of viewed it as a very good pastiche and a very good tribute to all the other TV shows. And it was to me, it was funny how intelligently it was done. And they seemed to have a lot of in jokes, but they were very quick. Uh, but I like that you know here you know after watching a billion cop shows and a billion detective shows, and now I finally see, you know, a, a fourth one that is done really well in terms of spoofing and, you know, going on the same themes and all that, just like the bomb scare, like uh, Lee said. And I said, well, you know, if you get food poisoning, that's scary too. But in any case, <laughs> uh, I, like the, I like the dog. I like the undercover, you know, thing when it's revealed in the episode and, and that's why I liked it. I said, oh, so this is sort of a clever take on if you happen to watch too much television like I do or if you happen to watch too many genre or the same genre all the time, then you can have a little fun poking, you know, poking it with a stick like this show does, you know, which, which is what I, I took away from it. Maybe I'm being simplistic, but uh, I even watched other episodes and I, I liked it. I said, oh, then one is making fun of undercover one is making fun of a murder mystery they, they even say what show they're they're you know the shows that they're attributing it to you know so i said oh so this is the new and i love in jokes i love in jokes of in jokes of in jokes so this will probably be a new show that i'll watch on youtube and uh, as long as they keep having it on youtube and don't pull it off for copyright uh that yeah. you know i can watch and sort of say okay you know remember it's a tv show remember to have fun with it and make fun of it and uh you know, it's cute. It's very cute. Cool. Um, well, going on to another thing then, um, seeing as this was made in 1994, um, compared, comparing this to the comedies we have today, hmm. do, you think, do you think this is better or, or worse than we have got now? Or, was we, or were we more funnier back in the day? Um, to any, this to anybody. Well, I'll open it to anybody, so. I'll tell you this, because the comedy these days is not really as much funny as the ones in the 90s or the 70s or the 80s, and comedies like this, um, definitely brilliant. I mean, shows like Keeping Up Appearance and many others, I mean, definitely really enjoyable. Yeah, I... I I I'd say I'd say it's uh, enjoyable. I mean, they probably could have done a few more camera tricks for the 2000s, but I mean, you know, I get the point. And like I said, it's in jokes. It's making fun of the styles, and as long as it's done well, it doesn't matter what decade it's in. If it's done well, then you know that's the important part. The main difference between comedy these days and comedy then is um, content. There's less sec there's a lot more con sexual content and humor these days than there was then they didn't use that um but yeah that that's for me apart from benny hill of course um <laughs> who was a one of one of his own um but uh yeah it's to all the classic British comedies, I you know, uh, this, um, I mean, I, I, I can call it a classic British comedy, even though it's not one of my favourites. But yes, and you've mentioned Keeping Up Appearances, Dad's Army, none of them, none of them relied on sexual innuendo, um, which is basically what you get a lot of these days in comedies. Well, to be honest, I think we get more than the innuendo these yeah. days. It's it's yeah. um, it's it's pretty much there. There's very little that's innuendo anymore. <laughs> it's not, it's not left to your imagination these yeah. days. It's no. it's in front of you. But yeah, um, yeah. And this is why I I always found going back to comedies to the seventies, to the eighties, and nineties compared to what we have now because I find them more more funny. But it, uh, 
I can't really call him innocent because he did sometimes he did get innuendos, um, like, are you being said sort of thing and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it was for me. It was they were more well written. The the comedies back then were more well written um, for me personally. Uh, what do you think, Susan? Well, the question was, what was what what was the comedy like in the nineties? No, 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 the question was compared to what the comedies we have now, to what we had back in the day in the nineties, eighties, seventies. Comparing it now, do you think they were better then or they're better now? Uh, it just depends. It really, shows. it really kind of depends on what uh, on what show and what you know it, but. You know, I, I, I have a tendency to, to compare the, the, the two sides of of the Atlantic more than than you know the the eras of comedy. Mm. I, I, I I lump pretty much all of all of United Kingdom comedy together uh, as as one. Mm. So I, I don't I don't I don't really know how to differentiate between the the eras yet. Well, oh well, you you, you, can, you can differentiate if because um, you can see slowly the un PC sort of comedy was the nineteen seventies. Gradually that was faded out because people didn't like all the uh, the innuendo stuff. Um, so you you can differentiate if the areas of comedy as it goes along, but. Yeah. But for me personally, we've all, we've all back then it was funny to laugh at certain people, certain things, because in the end at the end of the shows they always got better of the people what was um, having a go at these other people, shall we say, like shall we say, love their neighbour. Yeah. You know, it was uh, it was a race thing, but the guy, the white guy, always lost in the end. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know what I mean? yeah. Well, I mean, again, it it depends on, um, as I said, what's being written, how well it's being written, and then of course the other issue is some comedies are very audience based, like uh, Roseanne and Married with Children, even though that was in the '90s, but it had many different types of humor, and then it started changing as the as it went on, six seasons, ten seasons, all that. As far as on PC, I mean, there there was always. I think there was always an effort to make a PC, but you didn't scare people like you do now into forcing you to be PC. And then it depends on the show and the audience and the comedy. Like if they don't care about being syndicated, if they just want to be on cable, then they seem to be racier or they seem to be more in your face. And because everybody's talking in like 10 seconds or less, there's no time for innuendo or trying to, you know, be, you know, Half a have a euphemism or anything like that. Everything's in your face now. Even in the '90s, it was getting that way that more things were getting in your face. Um, so you know, again, it, it depends on on you know the style, the audience, the the you know subject matter, and all that. Um, you know, again, it, people are forgetting about the art of setting up the punchline, setting up the story, things because everything's so fast. So true, true. if they want to syndicate it, then you have shows like, you know, you have shows that still try to use a little bit more innuendo. Um, but, of course, you know, they do want to be somewhat modern because they're afraid of losing the audience altogether. So I, I, think, I think that's the conflict that you, that you sort of have to put up with the PC, the innuendo, the setting up the characters, how quick it's going to be. And you know what audience they're going to have, and are they going to be able to keep the audience and go into syndication at the at the same time? So it's probably very tough to write for certain shows because they know that you know it's not going to be a commercial success as opposed to the old days where they had a writer and a director and a producer, and they yeah. were committed to making the show. And if you liked it, great. If you didn't, too bad. But now they cancel shows and like six six shows or. or Ten episodes and it's gone. <laughs> well, as, as I say, the, the, the detective it, it lasted five seasons and it had the yeah. same writers all the way through for the seasons. Oh, oh. look, look who's joined oh, us! Can I just say, either either Susan's outside, or she stripped off her wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and she's got cars <laughs> running around the living room. Well, I mean, yeah. I know she's moving and she's selling everything, but that is a bit extreme. Oh, we're talking about the detectives, are we? Yeah, yeah. Do, you want, do you want to have your say? In, it must be over 10 years, I, an episode of The Detectives. Uh, me, my dad and my brother used, used to watch it together. And watching it again today, because I watched it earlier today, it's just so, so much fun. I, I really, really enjoyed every single minute of it. It was brilliant. I think it's very underrated, actually. I think it's very... People... You never hear it mentioned, do you, really? You always hear 40 Towers, Vicar Dibley, things like that. But I think this is just as funny. I mean, you've got the, uh, the, the barmaid who's coming on to uh, uh, Jasper Carrot. And what, what does she say? Something like, um, you can come down my back passage or something like that, wasn't it? Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then you got yes. the blind, the blind dog as well, uh, not the blind, the ma the blind man with the dog, and uh, they 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 think it's the dog that that's seen for the blind man. That, <laughs> it's just brilliant, and the uh, the sandwiches in the briefcase, that's funny. I didn't know actually. I watched this. Um, I didn't know this was actually uh, um, series two. This could have been easily a, a series one episode. You know, the first episode. I didn't know it was the first episode of series two. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I think the chemistry of the the three main people, you know, the the, the boss police officer, what's his name? Can't remember. George Sewell, George Sewell, the actor. Yeah. He's he's really good. They're all really good. They they really are. This it's just so funny and in the end they think it they raid the uh, they raid the pub. And they obviously think it's uh, it, it, it's them two numbskulls that have done it. You know, <laughs> they saved the day. But really, it was the and, oh, I just laughed hysterically. Well, I laughed hysterically for the whole way through, but I laughed hysterically when they went. When they oh, it's him over there. You know, when he's like on the undercover, and and then they go, oh, oh. I th no, no, we we got the wrong person. No, no, yeah, no. Yeah, oh, you know, yeah, no, it's the it, it's a, dropped, oh, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you. Oh, don't you do that anymore? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, just, it's just so funny. It was just so. F I loved it. Are we doing scores oh, afterwards? Are we? Because I know what my score is. Well, this is what we'll be going on to. We'll might as well go on to the final thoughts and scores now, because uh, I think we've done everything else we were going to talk about. Unless anybody else wants to say anything. Right, we'll go to final thoughts and scores then. So, Alec, do you want to go first? Since you, uh, oh. you've... since I'm unmuted, yeah. I just love it. I just really enjoyed this episode. Um, I think it's it doesn't date it at all. I, for me, I don't think it does at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, for me, sorry. it has to be. I'm hmm? oh, sorry, guys. I'm back. Go ahead. Okay, I think I'm, I'm going to rate it a ten. I don't. It made me laugh from beginning to end. I didn't get bored. And you know the twenty six. It's only, I mean it's only twenty six minutes, but uh, to me it's brilliant. Yeah, so underrated. Brilliant. And uh, if if people are watching and you've never heard of the detectives, just it's on YouTube. I think they're all on YouTube, are they? Or uh, series I, I two? I think anyway. they are. Yeah, I think they are. But you say I, I close my eyes and I just pick this one at random. So, mm. well, I, admit, pick, yeah. It, yeah. Well, yeah. admittedly, there are better ones out there. Um, but. It's the way we went. We just went with that one. Um, so, final thoughts and scores. Beef Dad. Oh, he's muted. No, I'm not. Oh. Um. <laughs> Strange. It's showing still going. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, he is. The... That's, well, I've already said what my problem is with this um the fact that um yeah yes they i preferred him doing stand-up comedy to this um actually um the guy who played blind billy he was in doctor as well 
Ron Cook, yeah, he was in Doctor Who. He did, he did, he did so many things. He was in everything at one point. Um, yeah, but as I say, for me, the um, Jasper Carrot was much better at doing stand up than he was at this. Robert Powell did a pretty workmanlike job of the comedy. Um, George Sewell was George Sewell, basically. It, it was the part that he played all the time. Um, the only difference is that he had an occasional funny line in this. Um, yeah, so for, for me, it gets a seven. It's a seven from Beef Dad. Let's go to Susan and her final thoughts and score. Uh, once again, it, quite, quite cute, quite funny, uh, <coughs> sort of interesting, uh, scenes, uh, with, with playing off the, the, the blind guy in the pool game, which was funny, and the dog, and the dog was adorable, like, the whole thing with the, <coughs> the dog not, not, not taking him around the furniture, but like you know the Dick Van Dyke Pratt fall that was hilarious. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Um, I really liked. Uh, I really liked this dog, the the sniff and the the Jasper Carrot and Robert Powell were amazing. George Sewell was was f funny and. Uh, so good cast here, and uh, and I'll give it uh, an eight point five out of ten. Brilliant! Thanks for that, Susan. Uh, let's go to Jason and see what he's going to say for his final thoughts. Well, I love it. Definitely pretty funny. I'm pretty sure there's going to be other great episodes to watch, and I'll be interested in watching the rest of the series. Um, great with the whole blind man situation, the dog, um, the, with the, even the lady, with the, some of the things she said, even especially calling it Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> um, but, yeah, great comedy. Um, definitely really enjoyed it. Looking forward to watch more of it. And I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10. I knew really? Jason would like it. Yes, I knew yes, Jason you know, would like yes. it. We said that, what didn't did, we? Yeah, yeah, what did we and you say in a, in a private chat? We said, Jason yeah. will like this. Jason will <laughs> love it, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and let's move on to Alex then. Let's see what his final yeah. thought is um, in school. Um, yeah, I mean, there might be a couple of shows or movies that might make fun of the genres better, like Airplane Dead or maybe Police Squad, but I still think it was pretty funny. I think it was well done. I hadn't seen it until yesterday. Uh, I, I have, I've already seen more episodes. I'll watch some more. And I, I love it because it's, I can see they're making fun of cop shows and mystery shows. And, and I like the, it was very intelligent the way they did it. And to do it in a half an hour, very good. So I, I'll give it a eight. And I think for the rest of the series and the other episodes, I, I, I'd say for, the, you know, for what they're doing, um, it should have lasted seven, but I'll I'll give it a a nine overall because I, I I like the fact that they were poking fun at everything and the style and the genre and everything. So oh, brilliant! Uh, I mean, it, it's amazing to think that this TV show, what ran for five seasons, started on Jasper Carrot show, his sketch show, as a it it was these started as like two minute sketches on every episode. And the audience liked it that much that they created the series. Um, so it's like the um, the Simpsons syndrome, isn't it, on the Trace Hillman? That's uh, that's how it started. And we're still suffering Probably. with that syndrome. Yeah, uh, we don't go down the, the Simpsons route. Uh, so for me, yeah, I enjoyed it. It's uh, a good, good to say, a good little uh, twenty-five minute romp. Uh, they are better. To be honest, there are better episodes out there, but it's still a good episode. Uh, great, great actors, great ensemble cast. Um, I, it's, what should I, I, I'm not going to give it a 10, because I know there's better ones out there. So, um, 8.5 from me. Can, so, I, can I just say something? This might yeah. sound strange, but it, but it reminds me, thinking of it, and I want to just thought about it now, it, it, there's a little bit of parallel between this and the Chuckle Brothers. 
Really? No, have you noticed? Um, like, who's that guy that says, um, oh, the boss guy? It just reminds me, there's a little bit of parallel between I don't know, I don't know. Bit, yeah. Maybe it's because I've watched the Chuckle Brothers in so long and just remembering it wrong. We're, we're, yeah. uh, we're, not, re <laughs> we're not reviewing Chuckle Brothers, Ali. Please, no. <laughs> uh, right. Brian will make it to watch. You, yeah, you've made a loose track now. Oh, yeah, that was it. I've just got my score. You were going to give us uh, all 100 quid. If I had the money, I would. Really? But, oh, oh. But I'm a man, to tell me, I wouldn't give you lot anything if I won the lottery. But you'd have to tell <laughs> me what you what you would be spending it on first. And I, you know, if I thought it was worthy of giving you that money, I would. <laughs> well, we'll have to discuss it in privately. Yeah, really. Okay. Well, where, where is this conversation going? <laughs> <laughs> right, like, let's. Will the match ball finish off now? So. I'd like to thank these guys here, and for the, the late comer, of course, Alid. Um, please, comment below, give us a like, give us a dislike. You know, everything everything counts in this game. Uh, follow us on Twitter, follow us on our Tumblr. Um, as you say, com comment, we want some comments, you know. Let us know what you think of this cast, what you think of the show. Or let us know what you would like us to talk about in the future cast. So, you know, we're there, we listen to you a lot out there. And sometimes I listen to this rabble here sometimes as well. Not always, but sometimes. Uh, that's usually when I'm sober. Um, so, without further ado, I will say adios, au de zin, au revoir, goodbye, until next time, be seeing you. Well, you dragged that one out. <sighs> you know.